Hi everybody, I'm Sally Cox. I'm going to show you today how to use Adobe Captivate 5.5 to create an image slideshow. So I'm at my welcome screen in Captivate and on the right hand side under the Create New section, I'm choosing Image Slideshow. I can also get to that from the File menu if I go to New Project, Image Slideshow. Either one will take me to the same place. Here I choose the size I want the slideshow to be. I'm choosing 800 by 600 for this project. I'm going to click OK and Captivate is prompting me to choose the files I want to use. So I'm going to go in here and choose all of these. I think I'll leave one of these off. I think I'll just do the top section. I'll bring this one in later. Click Open. And the next thing Captivate's doing is it's going in and bringing in all the images and then it's going to give me a dialog box where I can make some choices. I can actually do some editing of my images before I bring them in if I want to. Now all of my images are from all different lighting conditions. So in this particular case I don't want to go in here and do any adjustment of color or sharpness and apply it to all of them. I'm just going to leave them as they are. I'm also going to leave my zoom to best fit. And I'm going to click OK. And now Captivate is going to create a separate slide for each one of those images. Now my default settings over here, you can see in my properties, my display time is set to a default of three seconds. Now I can go in and change that for all of my images, or I could have adjusted it before I even began, but I'm going to show you a different idea. So first of all, understand that every one of my slides is now on a separate, uh, has a separate image on it. So in this particular case, when I scroll down to the bottom, I had 14 images, so I've got 14 slides. So the next thing I can do is I'm going to go up to my slide number one, and I'm going to do my command or control zero to fit the whole thing on screen, so I can see the whole image. And I can go in here and add a button if I want. Now there are some buttons that come with the program. I tend to use my own. I create them in Illustrator very easily and bring them in. But I just want to show you if you use the um, insert button tool, you have a couple options in here. One would be to go in, I'm go going up here to the very top of my properties. I can make a text button, which looks like this, but I can make it as big as I want and put text on it. I can use a transparent button, which I use a lot. That's basically going to do just that. It's going to give you a transparent button. That can be useful if you are choosing a part of the image that you want someone to click on. For example, if I drew a transparent button over my dog Lily and had a piece of text that said, click on Lily to advance, then they would know to advance it. And again, the button would be transparent. Or as I said before, when I bring them in from Illustrator, and you could also make buttons in Photoshop as well, I would put a transparent button over top of it that has the action on it. The final one is an image button, and you do have some choices here. I'm not particularly fond of these choices. Um, I would use, I've used these blue ones, but I, and maybe these charcoal gray ones, but there really aren't m many exciting choices here. So what I'm going to do instead is just simply create my own button. So I'm going to get rid of this one. And I'm just going to go down here to my shape tools and use my rectangle tool and do something very simple. I'm just going to draw a rectangle and then I can fill it with a color of my choice. I can make my own color. I can use one that's here. I can use my eyedropper to come out and pick up a color in my image. Or as I'm going to do right here, I'm just going to choose a color that I've used before. So I'm just using this shade and now I'm going to go in and uh, use my insert text caption tool and change my text caption to transparent and that way I can put some text in here and pop it right over top of this button. So I'm going to say continue and that way when the person clicks on it they will know to continue. They will know that that action that will occur will be to take them to the next slide. So I'll make this flush right just get this set up here the way I want it. I may want this text to be italic, so I'm going to go in here and choose italic and then just kind of pull it over here a little bit so it's not so close to the edge. And that's good enough. That looks pretty good to me. So now I've got my button already created and I've got my text over top of it. Now I just want to simply put a, uh, a, a transparent button over it for the action. So I'm using the insert button tool. I'm going to pull it down here, put it over top of it, choose the transparent button for the button type, and this one has a fill on it oddly enough, so I'm going to take that off and get rid of my stroke, 
And so now I just have a transparent button over top of it. And then I can go down under my action section of my properties and tell it what I want my action to be. In this case, it's go to next slide. And then I'm going to select all three of those pieces and copy them. And then I'm going to go over here to my slides, click on slide number two, and then shift click on the last slide. And I'm going to right click and choose paste. And just like that, Captivate copied that button on every single slide, which is pretty darn cool. So now I have that button on every slide. I'm ready to move forward. Uh, the other thing I noticed down here is that this particular one does not have a um, a color background behind it because the slides to uh, it's you know it's a vertical picture. So I'm just going to go in here and take off the project background and just give it some kind of a background color. I don't want the same color as my button though. Just give it some kind of a background. So maybe this. So now it's got a background behind it. So now I've got my buttons in place and just like that I was able to create this image slideshow. So now I'll preview it to show you what you get. So basically what's going to happen is the image is going to pop up and then I'm going to have to decide when I want to advance it. So it stays on screen until I advance it. Now that's not the most beautiful looking button. There are some other things I could have done to make it look better, but more importantly, what I tend to do is create buttons in Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop and then bring them in and do that same trick where I put the transparent button on top of them. So that's how easy it is to create an image slideshow in Adobe Captivate 5.5.